So uh, it's Peter Parker here from Millingen Grain Magazine at PIX AMC 2018. I'm here with Paul Martin, uh, the president of ATMA in Australia, and also the what's your sales manager? S- sales manager for um, Haslev Industries. Yeah, great. So um, we were just discussing that you've sort of moved more into the rendering industry, but um, you're the the president of the Australian Technical Millers Association. Um, could you could you give me a little a little background? Uh, Certainly. On yourself? So so I started uh, way back in uh, 1992. Just um, basically got a job at my local local mill, which was then th- those days was Waterwheel Flour Mills in a little town called Bridgewater in Victoria. So basically, the my old or my first manager's name was, was Andrew Mullins, who's, a, who's still a part of the ATMA today. Um, he used to live on the corner of my block, so I sort of left school. Back in the 90s, it was pretty hard with jobs and apprenticeships. There wasn't really much around, so I went down and just said, oh, look, have you, have you got any work? And then I ended up um, going to the flour mill and took me up these big sla- stairs to the top of the mill, and I was basically packing bran and pollen. So the old belt-driven plant would just pack the bags out, and right. you know, that's where I started, really. So I did, did three days on that, and then um, then I ended up getting a full-time job there just in just basically in packing, so I had no idea about flour milling at all. Um, was packing flour, or driving forklifts, loading bulk tankers, and then it just sort of went from there, I suppose. I, I then got a full-time job as a forklift driver, so I had experience there, and then I um, finally got a job in the mill, so we used to like prepare the grain, so in those days it's called a wheatman. Right. We used to basically grist all the grain together and, uh, and uh, condition it and prepare it for milling. So you'd work alongside your miller as well. And then um, then I got a job um, as what's called, those days it's called a topman. So that was your miller's assistant. So you helped the miller to run the mill. And this is all back in the days where there wasn't PLCs and, you know, electronics yeah, so running everything. More manual, yeah. Um, and yeah, and then from there I then got a job in the in the lab. So testing the flour. So I'd learn a bit more about the dough properties and baking quality and stuff as well. And then I progressed actually into the mill as the, as the flour miller. So I was running the mill, so running the shift. Uh, so I did that for a couple of years. And then in the year 2000 was when Waterwheel basically went into receivership. So then Lauke Flour Mills then took over or purchased the mill. Right. And then once they purchased the mill, I actually got promoted to it to be uh, the job as head miller. So then I basically did that role as head miller for the next um, for the next 10 years. So that basically was really just managing all the mill the milling side of things. So all of the shifts, the rosters, the gristing, the Basically, production, everything was just in, under my control. Um, so yeah, and just learn as I went. We did a couple of projects. The the Bridgewater Mill was really it was a really old mill. It was like a 70 year old mill when I first started. It's had a lot of old bucket elevators and things. So we did modifications and upgrades. So I did a lot of project managing in that time as well. Right. But it was basically just to get the mill, keep the mill running. And it's where I really learnt my flour milling skills because everything was hand adjusted. As I said, there was no computers or no nothing. It was basically you tied up the rail, you felt the stocks, yeah. and you did everything by hand, every by eye, everything by ear. The so best way belt, to learn. Exactly. Probably, yeah. If the belt squeaked, you were out on the floor and you were looking, you know, if a belt had come off. Because the, the, be- the, the other defining part of the of the um, Bridgewater Mill is that um, it was all run, basically the Loddon River runs through Bridgewater, and basically back in the 1800s they dug a, they dig, dug a water race, and they basically had a big a big turbine. So this turbine used to run a belt, which would run a rope, which would run a belt, and the whole plant was run off, off one motor. So it was just absolutely crazy. <laughs> so <laughs> it squeaks all over the show. Exactly right. right. So, so if that motor wasn't going, the whole plant was stopped. Right. So it was, it was pretty, pretty amazing. So I saw a lot of changes in the sort of 18 years that I worked at that plant. You know, we obviously brought a lot of electric motors in and all that sort of stuff as well. And, and in the end, the turbine was non-functional just because of droughts and then we didn't have the water flow. Right. Um, so, yeah, so it progressed and progressed. And then now uh, Lauke Mills have actually built themselves a, a brand new mill on the site. So the old, the old mill is sort of a bit of a... Um, a bit of a museum now, I suppose. Right. Um, yeah, so that's where I sort of come from with milling. So, as far as the a- the ATMA goes, I um, I first first got introduced in the ATMA in the in the early two thousands, um, and then, as I said, become a, become a member of the ATMA, and then I just really love what the ATMA does because the ATMA is about just the technical millers. 
know what I mean? So they're about the guys that are actually running the plants, not right. about the owners or anything like that. It's about the, the millers. Oh, okay. That's what we really, we really sort of focus on is the millers. It's not a, it's not a company membership. It's a, it's an individual membership. Right. And basically, I love the because I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, got a passionate personality, and I love to learn. So we just basically with with the ATMA. I got to know other people, and when you're in a in a place, and you can probably appreciate this being in New Zealand, you sort of can't see the forest for the trees. Yes. So then, you, the more I got out to ATMA functions, you could talk to like-minded people, and then you just think, oh, geez, I'm not on my own with this, or you know, they give you an idea or, or a situation, and say, oh, yeah, I've experienced that, and, and vice versa. And it really just it really brought me out of my shell, right? And just expanded, and, and I and I just love and I'm so passionate about the ATMA. I then became an executive committee member of the ATMA, and then I've progressed obviously to the to the president of the ATMA which I've, I think I've been president for about eight years now right and just just absolutely love what, what we stand for and just to try to help the technical millers um, in, in the country basically that's excellent so, so you mentioned that a, a big benefit of the ATMA is, is networking um, how else do you, do you see that it helps the industry Look, it's because we're here to help with training. We do, training. obviously, with the, with the yeah. nabbing. So in the flour milling side of things, we really focus on that as well because the ATMA was first developed for the flour milling industry, basically. Um, so obviously, we do the distance learning through through nabbing back in the um, back in the UK. Yes. So it's to try to help and benefit the the, uh, the millers, or in those days, it was the flour millers. But now, in recent times, we've really got a we've got a good cult following of stock food manufacturers as well, Brilliant. because still that cereal milling industry. Um, so we've got a, a good mix of, of millers and as well. And, and with at the moment, a lot of the um, the bigger the bigger um, flour milling companies, it's sort of more sort of David and like bigger companies and less smaller ones. Oh, right. Where the stock feed, feed is more on the other side. You've got a lot of privately owned companies. And only a small amount of, of, um, of, 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 or of corporate companies. I see. So there's a lot more, been a lot more support in recent years from um, from 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 smaller plants, which has been fantastic as well. So we've got a big um, we've got a big accumulation of, of stock feed as well. And to that as well, like our we have the ATMA to support the industry as well. Every two years at the, at this conference, we do what's called our Young Achiever Award. Yes. So basically, that that was the first time ever. That um, it's been won by a stock feed manufacturer, a oh, technical right. stock feed miller. Was this that year? Twenty? Oh, this year. Right. This year, yeah. So, so we've got our first ever stock feed manufacturer. So it's only ever been flour before that. So it's, it's been great to really cement the fact that you know we've got a, a good team of, of flour millers and feed millers because it's all about the technical millers, really. So, right. So yeah. So we're really just we're just a company. We're just we just serve the industry basically to try to make sure that there's technical millers because. As I said before, not many mills are hand operated anymore. It's all about machines and PLCs and automation. Yes. And with those sort of things, my, my fear is that, that millers are becoming more machine machine minders right. rather than actual millers. Yes. You know what I mean? So they're not feeling the stock, they're not adjusting the things, they're not listening with their ears, it's all they're waiting for an alarm or they're you know, things like that as well. Sure. So so the ATMA is really the benefit of us is to really to keep up that practical side of things as well and not just become office workers who are actually millers. Yeah. So, cool. so, so with almost 30 years in the industry and, and this all in Australia, um, you, you would know pre- pretty well the Australian industry. What do you see as the biggest challenges for, for Australia, Australian milling? Australia, Australian milling, like like most industries, especially with the with the manufacturing side of things, it's just basically getting getting employees, getting people that actually want to want to work. You know, like as I said to you before, I I started at the bottom. I packed bags. I I, grew, I I worked in every area. I worked my way up the ladder. A lot of a lot of young people today, unfortunately, just are a lot more. Um, they just they just want to be here yes. without being down here. Yes, and they just don't understand it. And in, in situations where companies have employed you know like accountants or things to, to be general managers of companies they just don't they just don't understand milling they don't understand the manufacturing side of it yes and it's really detrimental because they they've then lost a lot of good manufacturers and a lot of good millers mm. just because they haven't been looked after at the end of the day so oh, right. again it's not it's not a glorious thing there's no real other than the the nab and sort of flour milling the with the stock feed manufacturers they've just developed a I, I like a like an online learning tool as well, but really like it's not like a plumber or a or, a, or an electrician. There's no recognised apprenticeship to become 
uh, like a, a qualified miller. Yeah. So that's that really holds back um, a lot of lot of the industry as well. So right. So th- those little areas, and again, how how we how we combat that, I don't know. As I said, we've we've got we've got courses, we've we've got things that we're trying to mm. implement as well. But um, yeah, that's probably the biggest battle is just having good people that actually want to. Because you can make a career out of it. Yeah. At the end of the day, so um, so yeah, like so I said, I didn't grow up thinking I was going to be a flower miller. I no. just fell into it. But it's been an amazing career, and I've and I've progressed and, and really loved every minute of it. So I met some met some amazing people. Um, and yeah, and it's just one of those things that I think, as I said, it's not flower milling, it's not stock milling, it's not rendering. It's every industry faces the same battle. It's like how do you get right. people into that? into that industry yeah. yeah I was speaking to Fiona Taylor who's also from the ATMA yep. and she was telling me that you've, you've just recently introduced two more awards um, which is going to be a, a great incentive for, for, for young millers and, and, and training up um, definitely yes. them. Yeah. as I said that's, that's the more again the support of the ATMA for, for our industry as well those, those, those awards actually relate to this flower milling training as well we'd actually noticed with, with the because uh, there's seven modules in this flower milling training and it's, a, and it's a distance learning course so basically we were look we, we saw that the that the grades weren't as good as they were getting fails and things like that as well so we thought we'd give a bit more of an incentive so for the for the um, intermediate course that we've actually put in a prize to actually to be the prize is to attend this conference so our first recipient is actually here um, for this conference as well all expenses paid brilliant and then then the then the advanced section which is which is finishing off Basically, we've we've put together a award in, in conjunction with a mill over in the UK to actually send that person over to a mill and have a week's training in the, in their plant. So the Kilcurdy's uh, Kilcurdy's mill in, um, in over in the UK. So that that person is actually going to be heading over there as well. So yeah, there's just great. a couple of little sort of initiatives that we sort of put together just to try to, as I said, help the help the industry really to, to keep people wanting to train, wanting to learn and get a bit more practical experience as well. Right. Cool. Oh, that's fantastic what you're doing for the industry. Yeah, no. Cool. We, right. we, we, we do try, as I said. That's, that's, that's what the ATMA is all about. It's just about the industry. It's about our members. We're not, we're not making any money. All of our executive committee uh, do this from the, from the goodness of our heart. We don't get paid anything. And we just basically do it because we're passionate and we, and we love it and we want the industry and all the, the young up-and-comers to be uh, to, to have a career and yeah to benefit from it like like all of us have so, yeah. yeah fantastic cool well thank you very much for your time no problems at all cool thank you